This might be the final chapter in our discussion of Helena Montana. Like the conclusion of a movie, the ending here has a unique plot twist. I hope you enjoy it. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Knowing what you now know, consider this official timeline of Montana. 1803-1850s. The United States acquired from France the area of Montana east of the mountains. Britain relinquished its claims to the western section in 1846. Until the 1850s, Montana was the domain of Indians, explorers, fur traders, trappers, and missionaries. 1841. Jesuit priests founded St. Mary's Mission. In the 1850s, this mission became the center of ranching activity in the Bitterroot Valley of western Montana. 1846. Fort Benton, the only Montana trading post to become a permanent settlement, was established on the Missouri River. 1855. July 16, through the Treaty of Hellgate, the Salish and Kootenai Indians ceded their lands to the United States. 1859. Steamboats first reached Fort Benton. 1860s. Montana west of the Continental Divide was designated Missoula County, Washington Territory, in 1860. In 1861, the unsettled eastern portion was attached to Dakota Territory. In 1863 and 1864, all of Montana was included in Idaho Territory. 1862-1864. The discovery of gold in western Montana brought an influx of miners to Bannock, Virginia City, and Helena. Many of the miners began farming and set up supply centers such as Missoula, Deer Lodge, and Bozeman. 1864. March 26, Montana Territory was established with nine counties. 1870. January 22, Pegan Indian Village was attacked by troops of the U.S. Cavalry under command of Colonel E. M. Baker, 174 Indians killed, 140 taken prisoner. 1867-1877, Indian Wars. 1876. June 25, Sioux Wars General George Armstrong Custer and 265 men of the 7th Cavalry, slaughtered by Cheyenne and Sioux Indians at the Battle of Little Bighorn. 1879. Cheyenne. 1880s. Railroads first crossed Montana. The population of the territory was about 40,000. 1889. November 8, Montana became a state. 1892. October 15, Crow Indian Reservation opened to settlers by presidential proclamation. The territory covered 1,800,000 acres. 1898. Over 300,000 men were involved in the Spanish-American War, which was fought mainly in Cuba and the Philippines. 1910 to 1925. The number of counties doubled from 28 to the present 56 as homesteaders moved into eastern Montana. By 1930, a cycle of drought years had driven many of the settlers from the state. 1917 to 1918. More than 26 million men from the United States ages 18 through 45 registered with the Selective Service. World War I, over 4.7 million American men and women served during the war. 1930s. The Great Depression closed many factories and mills. Many small farms were abandoned, and many families moved to cities. As elsewhere in the world, Jesuits arrived before anyone else. A mission to survey the extent of destruction of the old world. We learn that from 1867 to 1877 the settlers were at war with the Indians. That would make it even more difficult to build all these fantastic structures. Imagine 500 the able-bodied men of Helena, of a total of 3,000 people, mining for gold, fighting wars against Indians, and at the same time erecting gigantic swimming pools, courthouses, federal buildings and whatnot. Who were these superheroes? Here's my alternate version of events. 1. Natives Americans are attacked from the air and mostly devastated. 2. Remaining natives are attacked from the ground and their ancient civilization looted, partially excavated and repurposed. 3. History is rewritten and reframed by the victors. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Library of Congress hosts an old newspaper, the Montana Post. The following are screenshots I've taken from the issue of August 26, 1865. 
Keep in mind that, at this time, Helena didn't even exist yet, according to the official narrative it was a mere camp. Helena House. Helena City, Montana Territory. The above-named house is now open for guests and boarders. Good beds, and the best the market affords, for the table, at reasonable prices. If Helena didn't yet exist, why does this newspaper call it Helena City? Letter from Helena. August 22, 1865. Since my last, our town, especially the lower part of it, has presented a lively appearance. Buildings of better style than those of six months ago, and most of them with tastefully designed fronts, are rising daily, as if by magic. Business, however, in everything, except provender and building, is slack, the miners not having yet commenced to lay in their winter supply, and I am afraid that they will not do so, until goods of all kinds take a rise of 50%. A large number of miners are making preparations for a visit to their homes. The several Mackinac boat companies are organizing for the purpose of giving security to passengers from the attacks of either red or white marauders, both by the numbers of the company and the shelter afforded by the boats. And so on. Official history says that Helena began to be built in the 1890s, or perhaps in the 1880s. But this 1865 article says that buildings appeared every day as if by magic. A very interesting expression. Moreover, white people and Indians were roaming around and marauding or looting the area. Paul W. F. Sanders and his lady, during their visit to Helena, went over to Mr. J. W. Whitlich's ledges and descended into the deepest shaft on the Union, 101 feet below the surface. The lady, with her own fair hands, selected some very fine specimens of quartz thickly studded with gold. There are but few ladies in this territory who would venture to make such a descent in a small bucket sliding down an inclined plane on two poles. Gentleness and polished manners, however, don't rob the fair owner of courage or vim. This item was taken from a page about Helena. Quartz thickly studded with gold is not the way precious metals appear when they are in the ground. This reveals that the fair lady found some kind of jewelry below ground. This aligns with my theory that they weren't mining for gold, but rather, looking for artifacts of a buried civilization. The fakers of history don't have the resources or attention span to remove every little detail, and much is learned by browsing old newspapers. Accident. One of the dancers in the Gaiety Saloon, being a new hand and not well posted as to the surroundings of the hurdy-gurdy house, on stepping out of the back door, made a sudden and unexpected descent of ten feet, falling on the bedrock, unfitting herself for business for a short time, but not sustaining serious injury. The house has been undermined and is supported by stilts at the rear end on one side. More evidence of excavation work in Helena in 1865. I wonder what I'd find if I expanded this article to include all of Montana. And what if I included the entire Northwest? I leave that research to others. It satisfies me greatly that, despite so much fabrication, propaganda and obfuscation, we are still able to piece together an approximate idea of our real history. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.